So Psalm 103, um, if you have the section verses 1 through 5, you can go ahead and start reading, and then we'll just read all the way through. I have 1 through 5, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless the holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repays us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, <clears throat> to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you who serve him, doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Thank you very much. Um, so question one. Says, who does David address in verses one through five? Who is he talking to? Himself. Yeah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You know, so he's giving a command to himself. Talk about all that's within me. Um, so in what sense can we do this today? Can we do what David did? What would that look like? Well, like Jim was saying, of the country is a mess. And I have I was talking to mom, and what I ended up saying, well, God is in control. Okay. I can trust him. Yeah. He's got a plan. Yeah. So to repeat yeah. those things yeah. so that we remind yourself of that. Here, remind ourselves yeah. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts about that? In what sense can we do this today? Well, don't we need it? I mean, yeah. we're not strong enough. Yeah. We we need whatever compassion and grace God mm -hmm. wants to give us. And if we need to ask for it, then we need to. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So David is talking to himself. Mm -hmm. We can do that same thing today. How does this help us understand the purpose of this psalm? To know that that's what he's doing here. And, you know, you look at the whole psalm and see how he does it. How does, how does that help us to understand the purpose of this psalm? Why did God want this psalm here in our Bibles for us today? Maybe sometimes we have to remind ourselves of what he's told us and what he is and what he'll do with us. And when I read through this, I just think, wow, all, you know, all these things we kind of forget yeah. that he does for us. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, God was very purposeful in, in putting this psalm here, inspiring David to write it, 
because we need it today. Yeah. You know, and, and like you say, you know, you, you read through the psalm, all that's there is so important and so helpful, so good, um, you know, that God wanted this here for us today. And just to recognize that. And it, it really actually describes the nature of God. Yes, very much. You know, just describes yeah. who he is. Yeah. Which uh, was interesting. So there must be some revelation going on there. Yeah. You know, with David yeah. saying, This is who you yeah. are to me. Yeah. And yes. uh, which is yeah. describing God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, well, go ahead. I was just thinking too, you know, because of David's sin, and, and we see how, you know, David went back to the Lord, asked. You know, just depended on him. That for us today, it's nice mm -hmm. to see that. You know, David wasn't perfect either. Mm -hmm. And when we mess up, you know, we can do like David does. We can yeah. just go to him. And, um, yeah. And we can count on these truths yeah. about God in that context. Um, the quote that really struck me, thinking about the psalm as a whole. Um, David rouses himself to shake off apathy or gloom, to use his mind and memory to kindle his praise. And, you know, that's sometimes what we really need to do. So question two, then, how should a person bless or praise or worship, depending on your translation, God, according to verses one and two? What does this look like practically what is it what do you see in verses one and two that help us to know how we should bless the lord what that looks like practically to remind ourselves of what god has done for us yeah he's blessed us he's given us well forgiveness of yeah. sins and yeah. the benefits that we have yeah and um he's been there every time you know we needed help yeah. he's been there yeah and so one of the things, a way to bless the Lord is to remember and That's remind ourselves right. of those truths about God yeah. and what God has done for us in the past. Other things as you look at verses one and two. He says to do it affectionately. Mm -hmm. affectionately. Yeah. Yeah. He means to really do it deeply. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the phrase, oh, my soul all that is within me, you know, those things really say something about, you know, that it needs to come from our heart, from deep within us. Anything else that you see there in verses 1 and 2? The end of verse 2, forgive our mm -hmm. and all his mm -hmm. Yes. As you, you go through right. scripture, you know, yes. just here, but through scripture. Yes. Just, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. One that comes to me recently uh, with family members and friends going through, you know, and it's uh, peace. That's mm -hmm. you can't you can't explain it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Peace, the peace of God was uh, unbelievable. You can't you can't explain that. Mm -hmm. You know, going through different trials and temptations, that the older we are. The you know the word that David uses, bless the Lord, bless his holy name, bless the Lord. Um, you know, one of the meanings or the kind of the root of that word has the idea of to kneel. And so that tells us something about how we do this. You know, that there needs to be a spirit of humility and recognizing who God is and the awe of him. Uh, that's part of praise and worship and blessing the Lord is that spirit and kneel before him as our God. 
That's what mine says. It's praise the Lord because of the word blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I go, yeah. yeah, praise yeah. the Lord, my soul. Yeah. And it's so it's so interesting. <laughs> and and praise probably makes more sense to us. Yeah, I also give God blessing us. Right, right. And that's an interesting yeah. thing. But but there is a different word that is usually translated praise. Oh, so yeah. how can we bless God? I mean, with our limited. <laughs> I know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's that's the question. And that's why a lot of the translations don't use that word. But that's the word David used, mm -hmm. was the word from number six, mm -hmm. where, you know, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord made this, you know, the Lord bless you. That's the same word that's used mm -hmm. here. And the idea of, of that word is, as God's word is proclaimed, as that bl blessing is spoken, that is the word of God, it conveys the blessing to the person who's hearing it in faith. Mm -hmm. How do we do that to God? You know, that's yeah. the question that comes. Yeah. And, and we can't. You know, we can't bless God in that way. There's nothing we can mm -hmm. convey to him. He doesn't need anything from mm -hmm. us. But the way that the word is used is that with our words and our lives, hopefully, we proclaim who he is. And part of that doing that is that others will also hear and recognize him for who he is and then offer him worship and praise. And so that's the sense in which we bless the Lord is in our praising him, others then join in and offer him praise and worship as well. So he's exalted in the minds of others too by our blessing him. Well, a bless means to kneel. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty hard to not be humble and mm -hmm. very sincere yeah. in what you're saying when you're on your knees. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, and that root there is important for us to recognize. Yeah. So, question three: Why should we bless or praise or worship the Lord? Um, what actions of God are listed in verses three through five? They're part of the salvation God has provided for His people. Let's just talk about those reasons that God that are given here to bless the Lord in verses three through five. Why should we bless the Lord? He forgives all our sins and yep. heals our, all our diseases. Yeah. He redeems us and yep. crowns us with love and mercy. Yeah. yeah. Satisfies our desires. Yeah. Our youth is renewed like the eagle. Yeah. And so just this list that David gives them of all that God has done for us. He starts with forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is important and purposeful, you know, that that's primary. You know, the first thing David thinks of when he's blessing the Lord is he forgives me. Um, and then, um, you know, just that, that continued list of all that God has done for us. Anything in that list in verses three through five that especially stands out to you? Um, you know, you have thoughts or questions or comments on. I think the renewal, like in your youth, and mm -hmm. in the New Testament says, "Youth as a child." Oh. So the innocence you go, you you're asking forgiveness for the mm -hmm. things that have gone mm -hmm. on in your life, and now it's mm -hmm. washed away and. You, 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 once again, you're an innocent child. Innocent. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good, that's a good application, I think, with that, that thought of your youth is you know, renewed like the eagle. Yeah, that spiritual renewal that comes through God's work of grace in us. What does it mean uh, he, who redeems your life from the pit? What comes to your mind? What would David be thinking of? What would he be describing? Who redeems your life from the pit? My, my translation says he ransoms us from hell. 
Okay. And, and, you know, that's, that's I see. you know, that's, and, and probably because of the context, you know, because it's talking about forgiveness, that idea, you know, that the pit that probably is primarily being thought of is the pit of hell. And he has redeemed us, bought us back from that. You know, the, the language could be used of, you know, somebody who's fallen, literally fallen into a pit or, you know, any kind of accident or trouble that you've gotten into and, and he pulls you out, he redeems you. You know, it could can include that too, just physical, practical things. But just to recognize in the context, probably that spiritual redemption through the cross is what David primarily would have had in mind. You know, we, we talk about things, you know, and that was the pits. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. sometimes I yeah. think he can get us out of our yeah. depressions that yeah. we sometimes yes. or the yeah. mundane that we sometimes get mm -hmm. into. Yeah. Yeah. But don't you think David felt like he was in the pit once he was, you know, accused of the Bathsheba? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Killing Uriah, you yeah. know. To, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he's ever any lower than that. Yeah. You know, once, yeah. Yeah. once yeah. he was accused and brought yeah. to him, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and David knew that redemption from that pit mm -hmm. that he was put in. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, what about question four? You've got two threes here, so is one of them four? Question no, three, no. question no. three. Oh, you got more questions for me. <laughs> Boy, your question three was long. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. So the end of verse three says, He heals all your diseases. But we know many faithful followers of Jesus who don't have all their diseases healed. How should we understand this statement? And does the context help? Well, eventually you'll be healed, but not in this life and in the next. Okay. And and so that piece of it definitely needs to be something that we bring into this picture. He heals all your diseases for every believer. That will literally be true in heaven. All diseases will be healed. So that part of it, is there anything else that we can say to help us understand that? We just have to really remember that it's his time frame, mm -hmm. not ours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 And yeah. that certainly happens where he does heal. But it might not be when we want it right away immediately. Yeah. There's the disease of sin too. Mm -hmm. all, yes. All that sin does in our life can mess us up. And it can kill the sin. Yes. And and again, because you know, and, and in Hebrew poetry, which this is, there's the main thing about it is parallelism. That verse of poetry in verse three, the parallels are he forgives all our iniquity and heals our diseases. And so because of that, it's, you know, it makes sense to say this isn't necessarily looking just at our physical diseases. It's looking at that disease of sin. And that word for heal can be used and is often used of physical healing, but it's the word that's also used of spiritual healing, healing from sin. And so, you know, that's a piece of this as well. He heals all your diseases. He takes away my sin and the death that I deserve because of that sin. And, and we, we should recognize too, you know, God, you know, what is it that's the most important from God's perspective? And from his perspective, our spiritual well-being yeah. is the most important thing. 
And sometimes it's through our sickness or suffering that God brings that spiritual healing to our life. So, you know, he might heal us through allowing us to be sick. Um, but he's healing my disease when he does that. So all of that is important to keep in mind because that's a tough statement. You know, if you're reading this psalm and all the wonderful things God's done for us, and, you know, you get to that verse, and if you're sick right now, it's like, God, what about that one? Um, you know, it can be really challenging, but we need to have that whole context in mind when we look at it. So question five. The psalm began with a very personal focus to where does the focus shift in verses 6 through 14. You Notice the change in pronouns from verses 1 through 5, the people mentioned in verse 7. Um, you know, <clears throat> verses 1 through 5 are all my, me, and, uh, you know, your iniquity, your diseases. All of those yous are David talking to himself. It's all singular yous. Um, so very personal in verses one through five. What's the shift that happens starting in verse six? It's about all the oppressed. Mm -hmm. It's talking about all people. Yep. And who specifically does he talk about in verse seven? Moses. Moses and Israel. And the people of Israel. And so, you know, David begins the psalm focused on, you know, himself talking to himself. But then he expands the view, starting in verse 6, and all people are ultimately in mind. But, you know, he starts out specifically, you know, Moses, the people of Israel. So, recognizing that change, how did God make known his ways to Moses and Israel? What incidents from their history? would have come to their mind. You know, think about David's people at this point. What would be the things that they would have thought of when it said, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people? Like? Well, like splitting with the race. Okay. And walking across. Yeah. The dry land. Yeah. You know, yeah. For and sure. Then, yeah. And then when they got to the promised land, I mean, it really just scattered. Yeah. Yeah. Given that yeah. Land. yeah. 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 When you're wandering, you're fed every day. Yeah. Yep. The manna. The cloud. Yep. Yep. Even guiding all the way. Further back in, in letting his, getting his people out of slavery mm -hmm. and from under the Egyptian rule. Yeah, the 10 plagues and yeah. specifically the Passover. You know, that event would have, would have definitely been in their minds as they looked at this. Um, the yeah, yeah, and so you know, God coming down on Mount Sinai and revealing Himself to them, giving them the Ten Commandments, establishing the covenant with them. You know, all all of that would have been in their mass and the mass of people. We're oh yeah, not, uh, we're not talking fifty people. <laughs> there. About how many? Uh, how many new? Uh, Tax people that they are going to hire. <laughs> <laughs> Way more. more yeah. It was even more than that. <laughs> yeah. One to two million? Uh, just maybe, and that their shoes and their clothes didn't wear out. Yeah. 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 And that's so funny. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, it's interesting, you know, that, you know, when we sit here talking, what would they have had in mind? What we think of is all connected to that Exodus event. Mm -hmm. And that very likely would have been what they would have thought of, you know, when they saw this, you know, that time period, that all of that would have been in mind. And so just to recognize that Exodus was the picture of what was to come through Jesus, you know, the Passover lamb, God's revelation of himself, leading and guiding, providing for them, you know, all of that was intended to point forward to Jesus coming. That was the picture of God's grace 
abounding in the Old Testament. Um, but to recognize David doesn't list all of those events here. What David does is, you know, he reminds them, you know, their minds are going there. Mm -hmm. But what David does is he is saying, remember all these things, not look at those things God did, but this is what God is like. This is who God is. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should praise and bless and worship the Lord. It's God's character, who he is, that David is really wanting us to focus on. So what astounding statements about God does the psalmist make in verses 8 through 14? And again, there's this list of all of these things that David says about God. Um, what, what, as you look at that list, what stands out to you what you know what do you focus on yeah so the, the one i have a question mm -hmm. is verse 11 mm -hmm. for as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy toward them that fear him mm -hmm. and my question is how are we to feel about this fearing god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about here exactly? So, are are you is the question focused on what does it mean to fear God, or does it focus on how does that work? That he he loves those who fear him. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess it just to me it's like. Um, I've always kind of thought when I saw fear in God in the Bible, it was more like a sense of being in awe mm -hmm, of him. Mm -hmm, yes. But I can see see how literal fear could be in play too, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, and Israel experienced what that was like when God would punish them for stuff they did. You know, mm -hmm. the ground opened up and swallowed mm -hmm. them. I would be yeah. very fearful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Number two here is uh, it's to pass more language. Common fear is just emotional fear. Mm -hmm. It's much deeper than that. Okay. Yeah. It's the respect mm -hmm. for God that we have. And we do it because we admire his love for us. Mm -hmm. And we fear him, not fearful of it, but we fear him or respect him. Mm -hmm. So the word fear, I think we look at the context of what it's used. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and we can we can always say when we're talking about God, there is reason for us to fear him, literally. You know, he's God. You know, he can strike us dead in an instant. You know, that he's so great and awesome and beyond us that there is that piece of it that there is truth to. But like like you said, in this context, it seems like we really should be focused on fear in the sense of awe and wonder because of what he's done for us. You know, that that part of it is really what comes through here. You know, Luther talk, talks in the catechism about the difference between childlike and slavish fear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here we'd say this is really intended to focus on that childlike fear. Not, I'm afraid of him, what's he going to do to me? But he is so great and wonderful and, you know, done so much for me. I'm in awe of him. I was, I was taught at a younger age that fear of the Lord is actually a gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That mm -hmm. you get that sense of mm -hmm. who God is so that yeah. you, you can't even come to appreciate it unless you sure. receive it. Yeah. In in spiritual form, some way. Yeah, and I so. think we maybe lack 
that mm -hmm. often. You know, we forget. It's, it's hard for us to, yeah, it's, it, it, we tend to be the loving, caring God. Mm -hmm. And we miss maybe a little bit by not having that awe. I wonder if the post crucifixion certainly makes a difference here too. Yes. Yeah. Now we have the full picture yeah. of God's grace and mercy towards us. And so fearing him, you know, more easily leans towards that awe, uh, uh, you know, holding him in awe. And you know, the context again, you know, because this you you talk about verse 11. You know, so great is steadfast love for those who fear him. And love is God's characteristic that he's pointing to there. And then in verse 13, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. You know, and so that father-like relationship is what he has in mind here. Um, the other aspect of this that you know, is a question that can come to a person's mind in this context is if you go down to verses 17 and 18, you know, steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him again, his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. And so just, you know, do we, do we look at those verses and go, Oh, I guess I don't qualify for God's love because I haven't really feared him and I haven't kept his covenant and I haven't done his commandments. So none of these promises apply to me because I haven't lived up to his standard. You now, is that what those verses are saying? Because, you know, you could read it that way. <laughs> no, well, it's, it's to those who keep his covenant. As a young child, and that, and if they're really starting to go up to the and mm -hmm. all this stuff, the church that I was brought up in, our priest, he, well, um, the fear mm -hmm. wasn't, it was not um, all filled with respect, mm -hmm. it was you need to be afraid mm -hmm. because yeah. you're guilty and. Frankly, it was a prayer for you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you know you can take these words and get that impression from them. He must have been a bad addict. Must have been a bad addict. Yeah. Inside joke. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, people who are blessed to not experience that as a young person you look at that and you think well, what about all the people that never find the really find the mm -hmm. lord i mean i was really blessed in that idea or i could still be going around thinking i don't have a chance because uh -huh. yeah. yeah 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 that's kind of scary perpetual guilt yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know so we we want to make sure we recognize in this psalm you know that's not what it's saying. It's not setting out, you know, hey, you got to meet the standard that God has set. Otherwise, you don't get these things. If you don't earn it, it's not yours. That's not what it's saying. And, and a couple of things that I think help us, hopefully, in that way is, you know, it's to those who keep his covenant. What is God's yeah. covenant with us? Know, and the covenant is Jesus and the cross. You know, and so keeping his covenant is receiving in faith that grace that he offers us. You know, this doesn't apply to somebody who refuses God's grace and won't doesn't want anything to do with it. You know, so there is a standard, but it's not you need to do these things and, you know, meet my qualifications before you get it. It's, you just need to receive it. It's all done for you. That's my covenant. It's a gift. It's grace. You know, that's what this is about. Um, we keep his covenant by 
believe in us, you know, by trusting his yeah. promises. By reminding ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so just to recognize that in, in this context, we don't, um, yeah, don't yeah. get pulled away. And then you have to go back to verse 10, though. He does not deal with us through yeah. the throne, nor is he yeah. according to our nickname. Yeah. After, after yeah. you've read those verses, yes. then you have to go back yes. up here and say, oh, okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah. can't be talking about, I've got to fulfill the law so I earn his forgiveness. Mm -hmm. He just said that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's not who God is. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. in Jan's experience, he emphasized law only didn't bring in the gospel. Right. It separated right. the two that they right. go together. Yeah. So yeah. Got the gospel. Yeah. I remember that part. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. 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 It seems to give that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's why people give up on. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with your law. Mm -hmm. So, did you watch the movie uh, Pollyanna? Did you want to, I don't know we, if you saw that. Point, yeah, long, the spirit, no, it yeah. And the preacher was was basically fire and brimstone. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, when he talked, everything was shaking. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, and, uh, and then he, Pollyanna talked to him over a period of time. And then he started talking about the love of God. Oh. So he was just, I <laughs> mean, you walked out of church thinking, man, if I screw up, I'm in big yeah. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rather than. Thinking of the love of Jesus yeah. and his his sacrifice for us. So that brings us to the second half of that question seven. Which of the word pictures of forgiveness in verses eleven and twelve and thirteen means the most to you right now? Just wonderful reminders to us of God's grace. As you look at those word pictures, what strikes you right now? Well, I keep remembering the east from the west from your sermon. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, too. Yeah. Or it's, it's, you. A, it's a powerful <laughs> image, you know, because, you know, they could have used as far as the north is from the south. You know, that would have conveyed a long distance. But there is a north and there is a south. Mm -hmm. and you can yeah. measure mm -hmm. how far it is between them. But east and west is a different thing, you know. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's not the same, mm -hmm. and so that's very purposeful mm -hmm. that it's east and west, mm -hmm. you know. And and the you know as high as the heavens are above the earth, how high is that? <laughs> you know, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you, you the set your measuring yeah. tape on the earth <laughs> and <laughs> stretch it. Yep. You know, and you can just keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, you know, that's the idea is, is to use these immeasurable distances mm -hmm. to try to describe God's love, which is infinite for us. Yeah. So, question eight. Carefully observe. The contrast between us in verses 15 and 16 and God in verses 17 through 19. Does this make you feel better or worse about yourself? So 15 and 16 describing people as for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field, the wind passes over it and it's gone, it's place knows it no more. That's humanity. God steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him to the righteousness, the children's children, to those who keep his covenant, remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. His kingdom rules over all. That's God. So that contrast is very purposeful there in those verses. Does this make you feel better or worse about yourself? Worse. Why do you say that? Well, because it's on a side, you know, okay. it's side. there's not much hope for me. Yeah. I mean, it's, you can't last. I mean, you're going to mess up. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, you can't do it. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, emphasizes, you know, we are so temporal, yeah. you know, we're fragile. so limited. Yeah. Fragile is another. And that, you know, the implication is we're weak. Yeah. You know, we, we really can't. Weak. Do even what we want to do, right? You know. Oh man. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Any other thoughts about, you know, does it make you feel better or worse about yourself? Explain. What What do you say? Better. Why do you say that? I, I, I felt it gave me hope. It's in, look yeah. how temporal you are. Okay. But look at it. You okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's an interesting thing to put together like that. And how do we hear that and how do we read it? Joe, you were going to. Well, I was it? just thinking, you know, in 14 and 15, I already know that about myself. <laughs> okay. So knowing though, what God is like in, in return, mm -hmm. that makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I, I'd have to say it makes me feel better just, but not because of me, mm -hmm. but because of God mm -hmm. and yeah. what he does. For yeah, me. yeah. And, and, you know, I, to me, this contrast here really strikes me, you know, in reading this. And part of it, I think, is because in our culture today, we've really lost this reality. Um, you know, the language in verses 15 and 16 is really harsh. You know, I mean, it's pretty, pretty tough. You know, that description of our humanness, yeah. our frailty, our weakness, our temporariness, yeah. you know, it's, you know, there's nothing to this, you know, and and you know the the language, you know, the wind passes over. It's it's God. It's place we know no more. It's like, you know, in in the picture that David is setting out, you know, you picture this this beautiful mountain scene, and the springtime, and these beautiful flowers spring up, and this this you know great mountain meadow plateau and then you know a few months later you look at that same scene and that's gone and you know it's place remember that no more it, it it's like it's standing and looking again and going where did you go you know there was nothing to that it just is gone you know, it's, it's really strong language, but the, the purpose of this and putting these contrasts here is to help us see, you know, because of God, I have reason to have hope and life and joy and peace. And, you know, that's the thing, you know, our culture says to young people, you know, you are good. You have everything. You can do anything you want. You can achieve. You are a winner. You, you know, you know that's the message that's given. And you know there there are reasons to want to do that. You know, to people to not put them down and to encourage them and build them up. But if you take God out of the picture, then. You know the reality that we're seeing in our culture is the kids are gone okay you said that to me but there's nothing to it you know i know the reality and if god's not in the picture what is there then i think that's why so many Hollywood people commit suicide. You know, you know they've reached the mm -hmm. I have everything now. Mm -hmm. And I'm it's still empty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, this, you know, one of the things I read, put it this way the point isn't how I feel about myself here. The point is God and, and knowing Him. Mm -hmm. The only way I can feel good about myself is to experience and live in the salvation that God has won for me for Christ and given me. But if I have that, you know, then, you know, one, one of the people this afternoon talked about, you know, made the point, in Christ, I'm not just temporal. You know, I don't just pass away in God. There's an eternity. In front of me, yeah. I'm a king and a priest yeah. forever. Yeah. Um, and so, 
know, it's just such a sad thing to think about how our culture is trying to make people feel good about themselves. There's no basis mm -hmm. for giving them that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without God in the picture, we really lose that. I think of the two verses in the Bible about, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then there's another one that says, apart from him, I am nothing. Yeah. And it's like, if we all would get that in our heads. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and that that really you know makes that point those New Testament applications of this. And our last day of VBS, you know, God created you on purpose for a purpose. Yeah. On the very first day, you're created in God's image. You know, yeah. that means it's yeah, yeah, you know, focus yeah. on God and the, you know, yeah. Can you imagine that. if they would do that mm -hmm. five days a week? Yeah, how cool. much difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> rather than so much depression now. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it does. The day yeah. of reckoning comes. Yeah. 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 I like that um, line in the song, We are a vapor, you are eternal. You know, mm -hmm. that song yeah. we sing, it's like, oh, oh, yeah. vapor and Christ are eternal. Yeah. Yeah. That reality has really become very evident just lately here. We've been like four funerals this year already. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, they're smiling. We're crying. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. smiling. Yeah. Yeah. I never feel yeah. sad for them. Pardon? I never feel no, sad for them. No, right. no, just for the one yeah. side. Yeah. So, question nine. According to Psalm 103, 19 to 22, who should bless, praise, worship the Lord? What do we see in those last verses of the psalm? Who should bless the Lord? It says, let everything. Everywhere, bless the Lord. Yeah. Bless the, the angels. angels. <laughs> angels. <laughs> Mighty ones. It mentioned Jim there. Ministers. His ministers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that verse twenty one line says servants. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, just just recognizing what David does here at the end. You know, he starts out in verse nineteen. Talking about God's kingdom ruling ruling over all, and so everything, everyone, everywhere is is where He's going with this. But He goes in verse twenty to His angels, and specifically He calls them His mighty ones, and more literally, it's His mighty warriors. You know, would be a better way that word should be understood. Um, you know, so His angels are. Are blessing and praising God. You think about that. You know, angels already do his word, they obey his voice, you know, and yet they praise the Lord in their mightiness. How much more should we, you know, who have been saved? From sin, that he sent his son to die for me. You know, I should bless the Lord. And then verse 21, yes, he has blessed the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. And those words can apply to a lot of things. You know, there are a lot of ways that those words are used in the Old Testament. But in this context, hosts is sometimes used to describe all of the planets and stars in the universe. Mm -hmm. And they are his ministers who do his will as God set in place the sun and moon and stars to govern the day and the night and the seasons and the years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that is likely what David had in mind. Bless the Lord, all his angels, his mighty ones, Bless the Lord, all his hosts, talking about the whole universe then, and then all his works in all places of his dominion, mm -hmm. summarizing that. And so, you know, everyone, everywhere, all the time mm -hmm. is and the idea. Creation. Yes, yeah. yes. So, and the raw yeah. 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 And, and praise yeah. him. And, and yeah. so that they're doing that by just being who they are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. the planets 
work in perfect mm -hmm. synchronization. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's because he set them up that way. Yeah. Yeah. I know about heavenly hosts for the angels, but not well, you know, and, and, creatures. And it love could angels. be, you know, that word is yeah. used to describe the angel okay. in places. Yeah. But the fact that he just said angels, yeah, yeah, and I know. Then he yeah. adds this, yeah, makes it, yeah. and and the pairing with ministers yeah. kind of fits with that mm -hmm. idea yeah. of the whole universe. And just thinking of that, you know, praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise him on creature criminal, praise him above the yes. heavenly host. Yes. I thought it was angels, but it's also the whole universe. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. and the stars and the yes, everything. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, I did so, but I had uh, verse 22. I, I like that. Mom says, bless the Lord, all you works. Oh, okay. So it's like all he his creation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. sure. Yes. And, and that's where if that's you read about the creation, you know, they talk yeah. about these sure. factors holding the universe right. together. That yeah. you know, the precision of some of the constants, as they said, one times ten to the 90th power. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. And that's that's they just yeah. it's just incredible. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. But where does David end? Back. So all of this in this psalm, but he circled back mm -hmm. to you and me and the call for us then to bless the Lord. Let's pray as you close. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have established your throne in the heavens, that your kingdom rules over all. Lord, we struggle to see that sometimes in our world, in our lives, in our hearts. But Lord, help us to know that truth and believe it. Lord, I thank you so much for this psalm and these amazing declarations of who you are. as a God who is merciful and compassionate and full of steadfast love. And Lord, we thank you, especially as we think about your redemption, sending your one and only son to die on the cross to take the judgment for our sins. Lord, help us to praise you. Help us to remember, to remind ourselves, and to go back and read and, and meditate on these truths so we think about who you are and what you've done. Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you for a good discussion. Uh, this Sunday, I will be preaching of our last psalm series uh, on Psalm 110. Um, then I'm going on vacation. Oh! <laughs> Where is this time? <laughs> well, partly here and then partly up for but, but you are coming back. I am coming back. <laughs> yeah. right. And we, we are going to have a Bible study on Psalm 110 <laughs> on August 31st. Uh, next week, yeah, we'll be gone. Yeah, are you going to go with Nikki? I'll be down. It's true. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, yeah, yeah, maybe even if it is, that really makes I think it was a little different.